A massive thank you to Patrick, Luke, Frosty, Speedy and Waters for subscribing to the channel. If you're already featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with around 11 of the F122 My Team Career Mode. For Season 2, yesterday we return once more to the Austrian Grand Prix. Of course, if you missed out on yesterday's sprint race, definitely recommend going back and checking out probably... I would say the wildest race we've had so far on F122 and that is quite impressive when you consider of course that it was just a 12 lap sprint around the Styrian Mountains. But of course as always a massive thank you to all of you as well for the insane and continued support on the channel. You know at the moment at the time recording this we're well on our way to 77,000 subscribers. You know 80k is right around the corner. You know if you're not already please do make sure you get yourself subscribed of course for daily Formula 1 content as well. But yeah apologies though as well. Well, in yesterday's video, the fact I'm gutted. I got to the end and my webcam hadn't recorded. I don't know why. I mean, I'm, I'm waving to the webcam now. Fingers crossed it's actually going to work today, but we'll wait and see about that one nonetheless. But yeah, 36 laps today ahead of us, though, around the Austrian GP circuit. Obviously, I don't want to give too many spoilers before we jump into it, so I think the best thing to do is just get into it then here for the Austrian Grand Prix main event. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula One team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months, and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself as well as thousands of others trust Bybit as their crypto. Good afternoon and welcome to Spielberg and to a circuit that in one form or another has held every Austrian Grand Prix in the championship except the very first back in 1964. It was at this race that John Watson lost a bet and his beard when he took Team Penske's only F1 victory in 1976. If anything, the stakes are even higher today with 25 points available for victory and a crucial advantage in the championship fight. The Spielberg circuit then is situated 700 metres above sea level with just 10 corners making up one of the shortest laps of the season. One time around here is a distance of around 2.6 miles with the best overtaking chances into turn one or the tight uphill of turn three. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position and Lando Norris lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Verstappen, Charles Leclerc and Ricardo, Sainz, Ocon, Joe and Alex Albon, Magnussen, Perez, Yuki Tsunoda and Mick Schumacher, Schwartzman, Latifi, Oscar Piastri, and Felipe Drugovich, Stroll, Russell, Gasly, and Mr. Monaco. And now it's time to head down to the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Right, well, here we are then on the grid, ready for the Austrian GP, and I completely forgot about all the grid penalties we've got ready for the main event here today. So, yeah, what we'd actually done in the sprint race was in 12 laps, 
gone from 21st to 8th. We'd gained 13 places despite a safety car as well. It was probably, like I said, uh, the best drive I've done on F122. And apparently we're going to have to try and do it all again today in the main event then. So 36 laps ahead of us though. But things are probably going to get very, very interesting here today. Going to try and mix it up a bit and actually start on a set of soft compound tyres there. We'll see how far they can go. And then we'll either go on to mediums or hards to the end of the race there. I kind of just don't really feel like we lose out anything by trying a slightly different strategy here once again. But, you know, we've got a fresh power unit then in the back of the car. So, fingers crossed we'll have some more ponies ready for the race today as well. But, of course, as always, we've got the formation lap first of all. Gasly and George Russell both had nightmares in the sprint race yesterday. So, we'll have to wait and see how they get on as well today. Well, I'm not quite expecting the same luck early on in the main event today but you know if we can gain some places off the start using the soft compound tyres I will certainly take it as an advantage here but of course yeah fresh power unit in the back of the car as well fingers crossed we can fight for a good result here today still I think yeah if we can score points again that would probably be quite a miracle but we'll only need 10th rather than 8th today as we get the car nicely lined up on the grid waiting for Pierre Gasly to get it stopped and why <laughs> Piastri <laughs> has just decided to do another formation lap I love that on F122. Right, ready on the grid then here for the Austrian GP. Waiting on those five red lights. And it is going to be lights out. And away we go. Just nowhere. Nowhere off the start there as we head down towards number one. You can see already the AI two or three wide there as we're going to try and have a look back at the inside of Pierre through turn one. And we put the power down on the exit there. Oscar Piastri a bit caught out on the outside there. Horrible to try and put the power down on those curbs as we head up the hill there everyone trying to look for room as we've got to be aggressive in towards turn three what was that from Lance Stroll there is three wide just in front of us there Drogovic Schwartzman and George Russell so both myself and George trying to make up progress and places at the start of the Grand Prix there as you can still see two by two as we head down the hill is Schwartzman or Drogovic going to move up into P15 then it's a battle from two very inexperienced drivers there, of course, both with Ferrari power as well. You'd think Felipe Drogovic would have the advantage, but neither Hatter or Alfa Romeo have really adjusted to the regulation changes very well in this career mode. All of the Ferrari powered cars did very much get nerfed as we went into season two there. Look at that Schwartzman. Very, very aggressive there with George Russell all over him trying to find some space down in towards the final couple of turns. But maybe our best bet today is just going to be try and follow George Russell up through the field there as already you can see on the offensive on Robert Schwartzman as we head back down into towards turn one there who's going to come out and top oh George Russell does but he absolutely sits on the exit there and we're going to get the pair of them off the corner so straight into P16 then off the start as you can still see too wide as we head up the hill is George Russell going to try and send it on myself no he is not whoa as we accidentally stamped on the throttle there on the curbing lucky to hold on to that one but yeah, pretty chaotic start once again then here at Austria, but I say that and I probably even shouldn't be surprised anymore. Next up, Felipe Drogovic though. Oh, on to lap three then. DRS now has been enabled here as Zhou Guan Yu, I think, caught napping there off the exit of turn one, but three wide as they head up the hill there once more. Drogovic, Sonoda, and Zhou Guan Yu. Can we do the old up and under on them? See how many cars we can jump four wide on the exit of the corner there. I've clicked the wrong button on my wheel. I can't believe I've clicked the wrong button on my wheel as we're three wide. Four wide even at the top of the hill. Here at Austria, what a way to kill the hype in a single moment there. But can we put the power down on the exit? Yes, we can. And this might still be a triple overtake there as we head down the inside. Oh, we've got Drogovic there. I think it's locked up around the outside of me. And yes, we have picked up three cars there in one go. In I mean, they're still three wide. What on earth is Austria? On F122 though, I mean, we've got Kevin Magnussen, Alex Albon, and Mick Schumacher. They're just in front of me as well, but Austria and great wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing on F122 just go hand-in-hand. Hand. I mean, look at the gap the McLarens and Lewis Hamilton have created at the start of this race. Is being going to try and get a run on Mick Schumacher as we head up the hill. We have got very, very good top-end speed, it must be said, this weekend there. As Mick Schumacher is going to try and go defensive on me. Might have a look at the inside of Kevin Magnussen, his former teammate there. Very, very close to contact at the top of the hill, but we get around the outside of the Haas and out a bit of P12 then of the race. And you know what? We haven't had much worse of a start than we did yesterday here. 
There's Kevin Magnusson and Alex Alban just in front of me. Surely, with softer tyres, we might be able to look past these two. Oh, we got yellow flags out. I think that's a Ferrari off in the gravel trap. Someone's had issues. It's Charles Leclerc who's going to drop down the order there. So it must have been a mistake from the Ferrari. I don't think he's out of the race. I think he's just trying to stay out of the way. And now suddenly K-Mag is the one that separates myself from the points there. How have we done this two days in a row? So we're going to try and get a run on K-Mag back down towards Turn 1 to the outside. We'll try and just do the old switcheroo on him as we head out of Turn 1. What is my problem with doing this? <laughs> it's so annoying. When I press the ERS and the DRS button at exactly the same time, I keep accidentally restarting my wheel. I apologise that it is killing the hype in this Grand Prix there. But side by side now with Kevin Magnussen as we head out of Turn 1 there. We are going to fly past the Aston Martin by virtue of the DRS. And now we've got to try and get within the range of Alex Albon. Otherwise, I feel that Aston is going to come straight back at me. But back into the points then once more here at Austria. We are just having some insane lap ones. And bless him, Oscar Piastri has really just not gelled with the car so far this year. Did score that one point back at Monaco, but apart from that, yeah, he has really, really struggled so far in Season 2, but then again, after the first three races, so have we. It kind of was, you know, the worst-case scenario for him when the car had the potential for points. I mean, he probably could have scored, I reckon, in Albert Park. He would have got P9 there as well, had he not had a mechanical failure. But poor old Oscar Piastri. Desperately want to see more from him in the second half of the year, but... We've got to give him a good car as well. As much as I want a decent car, let's, let's not forget about that. We've got yellow flags out. Someone's got issues here. Not too sure who it is. Thinking it might be a Haskar. I think it might be Felipe Drogovic dropping to the wayside in this Grand Prix. And he's causing a bit of carnage trying to do so there. As his car's hung up behind him. So Drogovic then causing a bit of chaos. As we've got a safety car out. Do we pit now? Do we pit now onto a set of hard compound tyres there? Or do we go mediums and then... Do we double medium this? Or we have to pit at some point soon there. These soft tyres aren't going to really make much sense. Take a lot longer. I think we're going to have to go... We'll go hard. Because then it means if we can by some miracle make it to the end. Then I absolutely will. But into the pits we come then. I'm not too sure if this is going to save us or screw us here. So we head down nice and slowly into the box there. Surprise K-Mag's in actually. Seems a bit early for the medium runners to be diving in. But yeah, that hasn't worked out too badly for myself in the Grand Prix there as we are going to get optimal turn in to the box. Fingers crossed, nice tidy stop by the team. 2.4, love that. And we'll stay ahead of K-Mag as well there. But sadly, we will come out behind this whole gaggle of cars. Maybe we can get the jump on a couple of them. Oh, I don't hit the wall. Don't hit the wall on the exit of the pit lane there. No, we'll come out just at the back of the queue again. All that hard work to still be last. Right, well, having a look then at the current running order, Valtteri Bottas still leads the way ahead of Lando Norris and Lewis Hamilton there. But look at Alpine, fourth and fifth for them. That would certainly be a result to write home about come the end of the weekend there. Max Verstappen, I think he had some issues before the safety car came out there, so I'm sure they will have got those rectified down at Red Bull. But he was losing a lot of time to Alex Albon and myself. That with Mick Schumacher and at both Ferraris rounding out the top ten. However, I think most of us further back there, I think Perez is the top runner that's pit so far. But I think then we're only the second car. I think there's only four of us that are pit. Perez, myself, Kevin Magnussen and Lance Stroll. So, sorry, Kevin Magnussen and Yuki Tsunoda, sorry, even I should say. Um, so, things could get interesting later on here. You know, if we can make it to the end, effectively we've got one less pit stop than everyone else. If we can, then we should be quicker than pretty much everyone else to the end of the Grand Prix. So... This might be doable here. A safety car is about to come in then at the end of this lap. Right, it's like I said then. Safety car in at the end of this lap. We're already at one third's distance here in Austria. So this would be the effective end of a sprint race. But we've still got another two sprint races to go, if you will, here in the Styrian Mountains. As it is going to be interesting to see when everyone else does box in this Grand Prix. But are we going to have a pace advantage over the likes of Lance Stroll over the next few years. We try and put the power down at the final corner. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see though. I think we absolutely need to try and keep K-Mag and Yuki Tsunoda at bay as we head back down towards turn one. So we can try and get the power down on the exit of the corner there. Of course, fresh hards versus pretty worn out mediums at this stage of the day there. But everyone in front going single file as we head up the hill. We are going to try and take Lance Stroll by surprise there as we'll go up the inside. And I think Kevin Magnussen might try and follow us. There is a nice little send at the top of the hill there with Stroll 
make it any easier for his teammate off the corner. I don't think he will. Of course, we saw them get very, very close last time round in Silverstone. Of course, before we got involved in a three-way collision with the pair of the Aston Martins. But two by two up the hill there once more. I can't quite work out. There might be Pierre Gasly and someone else. The result, Natifi just gets a little bit caught out there. Oscar Piastri nowhere to go off the exit of the corner. And we're just kind of left stranded watching the two of them here. It's, can we make it three wide? Down in towards the final corners. Tiny bit of contact between myself and our teammate there. But somehow we make it through as Gasly absolutely getting harassed by the Alfa Romeos at the moment. Will Pierre be able to get the run back down towards Star 1? No, he won't. Robert Schwartzman is going to try and have a look up the inside. As all well, a tiny bit of contact there with the Alfa Romeo. Luckily not getting any front wing damage from that one. But he's still struggling to put the power down off the exit of the corner. So can we try and make a move work on Schwartzman? So he's going to have a look up the inside of Gasly once more. They're at the top of the hill. And we'll try and get around the outside of one. And maybe even put the power down and get around the outside of the other there. As that's one of them navigated. And hopefully, as long as we get the run down the hill on Pierre, that might just about be two. As Gasly trying to keep the nose in. We'll use all the exit curb there. Luckily, Pierre gives me the room. And back him into P14. The DRS on Joe Guan Yu. Surely he's going to be a sitting duck at a turn one there. As George Russell... Just not making any progress at the moment there. As look at that, Joe Guan Yu doesn't get the DRS still on the Merc as we head up the hill. They're going to try and muscle our way to the outside of the Alfa Romeo. Look at that, he's going to go for it up the inside of George Russell. Tiny bit of contact there between the Merc and the Alfa Romeo. As well put a lot of rubber into the ground off the exit of the corner there. But we're both gaining in on George Russell. He's going to go defensive there. Can we steamroll our way around the outside? No, George Russell. Big lock up there as we'll try and go up and under on Joe Guan Yu as well. They're still side by side as we head down the hill here. And who is going to come out on top in this situation? Of course, it is the Mercedes in the end. So oh, I thought about it. I thought about it up the inside of Joe Guan Yu there. But we'll think better as Pierre Gasly then tried to get around the outside of me. Loads of cars now, though, into the pit lane here. And Joe Guan Yu is going to be one of them as we'll try and squeeze around the outside there using a little bit of exit curb. Oh, that's, that's that's quite a lot of entry curb in towards the final corner there. But plenty of cars into the pit lane then here in Austria. And look at the advantage we're going to have if we can get these tyres through to the end. We're going to have a good sort of 10 seconds over a lot of the cars. Because it's only, of course, Sergio Perez in front of me that's boxed. There we go then. End of lap 17. Most of the other runners now into the pit lane as Sergio Perez. And have we got one Ferrari that stayed out there? Did Daniel Ricciardo accidentally finesse this as well? Let's have a look then, as we're going to come out ahead of Bottas. Yeah, Daniel Ricciardo. I completely missed that then from Ferrari here. So Ricciardo now could be on for Ferrari's first win of the year. Of course, he took McLaren's first win back at Monza 2020 for the first time in nearly a decade. He might just do the same for Ferrari. It hasn't quite been a decade for them, but it certainly has been a long old season so far. That being said, though, he's only got a nine-second lead over Valtteri Bottas, and Austria isn't the hardest track to overtake at, so, I mean, we could see a Verstappen-Leclerc-style end to the Austrian Grand Prix today as we've just crossed over half distance, and currently we're running in a legitimate podium place. So there we go, lap 20, Bottas still going absolutely hammer and tong at the moment, as so we're going to try and put the power down out of turn one. Bottas couldn't quite get the run on me up the hill this time round, as we are pulling good time away. From Kevin Magnussen there. That might be because he's battling Lando Norris further back. But yeah, not really a battle we should be trying to get involved with at the moment against Valtteri Bottas here. Which surely now he's going to be able to put the power down. I mean, we'll just follow the race in line. I'm not going to try and cost him any time here. We're just trying to focus on getting ourselves to the checkered flag as soon as possible. So our Bottas, not the best move there. But Bottas never really known for his wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. As Kevin Magnussen still trying to hang on. Ahead of Lando Norris there. That's what we love to see. K-Mag making his own life more difficult. To hopefully make mine a bit easier. I mean, I guess the good thing at Austria, of course, is the fact the tyre wear is pretty much non-existent on a set of hard tyres. I mean, we're already halfway through this stint. And the three is already at like 25% wear. This has worked out absolutely beautifully for us so far. But things can still go pear-shaped around this circuit. It's Carlos Sainz now eight and a half seconds back. I mean, I'm looking at it. I think one of the Alpha Towers has just got past Kevin Magnussen. They might genuinely not have enough time to catch me up because our pace is not that bad around here. As I reckon, you know, Carlos Sainz, depending on how well he gets on, he might struggle towards the end here. I think he will get close. 
but we might have enough to hang on. Don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, though, as we still got Lando Norris to worry about. I mean, if we could get some DRS off him, this this race could really go any which way. So here comes Lando Norris, then, as we head up the hill. I'd rather they make the move up into turn four than into turn three, to be honest, just so we can try and just not have to go side by side at the top of the hill there. But again, we'll do what we did with Bottas. Not really trying to defend the position whatsoever there. Hopefully, use a bit of battery as well. So here comes Lando Norris up the inside. And he'll do exactly the same thing Bottas did there, but completely trick himself over on the exit of the corner. And will accidentally keep hold of the place. That was genuinely not my intention there, but we got the switch back and Lando just jumped out of the way. Whoa, Lando Norris now really trying to send it on me as we head back down the hill. Was not expecting that one. Oh, come on, Lando. I'm not worried about battling you, mate. I just don't want to lose time to Carlos Sainz behind there. As Sonoda up in a P7 now of the Grand Prix. Like I said, I don't legitimately believe he'll have enough time to close up, depending on what the pace of that Alpha Tauri is like. But, yeah, if Lando now can just give me some DRS for a couple of laps, I won't moan too much. But he's definitely cost me a lot there against Carlos. As I reckon that Alpine is probably only about half a second a lap faster here. Like I said, if Lando Norris is going to play not particularly nice with his overtakes, the least thing he can do is give me some DRS for a couple of laps, as I think now you can see Bottas is in a hot pursuit of Daniel Ricciardo at the front of the field. Ferrari versus McLaren for race victories. This really takes me back to my childhood in Formula 1. You know, that is proper 2007 to 2008 vibes for me, but... Yeah, anyway, if we can just stick inside the DRS of Lando, you can see we've actually pulled away from Carlos Sainz that lap. So this is working very nicely, but I worry this time round, we're probably going to lose the draft. Right, starting lap 30 then, you can see the gap to Sainz is still up and over six seconds at the moment with seven to go. I mean, we are going to definitely start seeing a bit more of a pace drop off in the final few laps here, but we are still pushing just to keep the gap up at the moment. Team saying don't worry about the tyres as Hamilton now moves up into P7. But this is potentially shaping up to match our best result ever in the My Team career mode there. We've got a fifth place at Jeddah in the second round of the season. And <laughs> what a race this would have been to do the same there. Savvy strategies aren't that common of place on F122. You know, you just can't mix it up because, of course, everyone gets a free set of tyres at the start of the Grand Prix. So if we can somehow pull this off. I'm going to be a very, very happy man. Six laps to go here from the Styrian Mountains. The gap to Sainz is still in the six-second zone. Four laps to go then here from Austria, and it looks like the Ferrari dream of returning to the top step of the podium for the first time since Abu Dhabi last year has unfortunately fell away from them there. Daniel Ricciardo, it would still be their best result of the year if I'm not mistaken. Leclerc had a double podium at the start of the campaign. Sorry, a double podium. He had two podiums in a row at the start of the campaign. But I don't think... I think he's returned to the roster and once since then. Danny Rick has really not had a solid start to the year and it was still down the order. So it would be Ferrari's best result of the campaign so far, but certainly not what they would have wanted after so comfortably leading the way throughout most of last season. However, Sainz, five seconds back still with four to go. He simply isn't quick enough at the moment. And this, I mean, we said at the sprint race, but I thought if we could try and get ourselves a top 16, I'd be quite happy. And somehow we scored points. I then said at the start of this Grand Prix, if we could get up, you know, somewhere near the points, it would probably be a miracle. I did not expect in that sprint us to walk away with a point. And I certainly was not expecting in this main event to potentially be looking down the barrel of 10 extra points. It would be our best weekend haul yet of F122 Mighty. No! Oh, Oscar Piastri's out again in another Grand Prix. They're back-to-back -back DNFs for my Australian teammate. And this is what I mean about having absolutely no luck at the moment. Poor old Oscar Piastri out yet again of another race. When will my teammate get some luck? Well, about to start the final lap then of the Austrian Grand Prix and I mean it has been such a difficult run of races. We went through Bahrain, Jeddah, Australia absolutely on top of the world there fighting it out with the best of the rest and comfortably picking up a huge haul of 26 points and since then it has been an absolute ghost town 
on F1 22 there. You know, round four of the year back in Imola. We just really lacked pace all weekend. Miami, we barely missed out with the final corner there with a lockup from Alex Albon. We could have got a top 10 that weekend there. Spain, we had to throw a bit of a curveball into the strategy and we just missed out in the dying stages of the Grand Prix. And then, of course, Monaco, we let Oscar Piastri have the place back late on in the afternoon. But here, finally, we're going to return to the top 10 once more in the Austrian Grand Prix. I mean, it's the track we've probably done the most laps on so far of F122, but I do absolutely do not care. Valtteri Bottas will come through. McLaren make it five race victories in a row there. Who will be able to stop them now? Surely Mercedes need to find an answer, but round in the final few corners, we're going to match our best result of the year. It's P5 in Austria from the back of the grid. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in part firm eight. That's it then for another spectacular Grand Prix here in Austria. And a truly magnificent drive to hang on and take the win. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? I'd say it was down once again to good, consistent driving. Nailing the corners, working to the track conditions and perfecting the team's strategies. They got all of these things right today and the results speak for themselves. As the winners make their way up to the podium, one can only imagine the celebrations that will take place at McLaren tonight. Congratulations to everyone on the team, securing the win and proving that they're a force to be reckoned with out on the track. This result then narrows the gap between our championship leader and the rest of the standings. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the drivers' championship. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? I have to give it to Mr Monaco. That was a commanding performance today. Very impressive indeed. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. Well, that was certainly an exciting weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for more exciting Formula One action very soon. Well, there we are then, the end of the Austrian GB weekend there, and a fantastic result for Valtteri Bottas. Maximum points from the weekend there. What more can you say about that there? Pole position, fastest lap race victory today. 26 points on the board and even comfortably beat out Daniel Ricciardo, who was on a better strategy there. I mean, McLaren at the moment are just in a league of their own. Lando Norris, P3 ahead of Perez, and somehow, yeah, from last on the grid, we come through for P5 there with a lucky strategy call that didn't work out, actually, for the likes of Kevin Magnussen and Yuki Tsunoda there, neither of them able to walk home with points there. Sainz in sick ahead of both Mercs, Charles Leclerc, and like, like I said, Verstappen definitely had issues today down in P10. Just Oscar Piastri and Felipe Drogovic, my teammate and my former teammate, both not making it home to the chequered flag. But that means finally, long last, we pulled out some extra points in the championship there. It's nice to actually get the tally moving once again. Hamilton still leads the way, but the gap to his old teammate Valtteri Bottas down to just 18 points at the moment. Is George Russell and Lando Norris still in third and fourth there? Daniel Ricciardo jumps both Red Bulls up into P6 there, so a very good job done by the Australian there. With Sight still in ninth there, and we're still in an Alpine sandwich, but now a long, long way ahead of Esteban Ocon there. Any of the movers further down the order doesn't look like it this weekend, as Sonoda still yet to get his first point of the year there. Constructors-wise, though, Mercedes still lead the way, but the gap coming down 39 now ahead of McLaren. They desperately need to find something before we head into the summer break there. But we're still, I mean, at the moment, we're just trying to comfortably finish P6 in the championship. I think unless we get a miracle run in the second half of the year, Alpine 
are just going to be a little bit too far in front. But thank you all so much for watching this video nonetheless. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well, and we will return very, very soon with more F122 content. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members, so a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below, and yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.